What really motivates me in terms of further analyzing these patients is the acceleration or the pace of their rash. So I, I ask patients, you know, how long have you had this? And many will say, oh, I've had this for 10 years, 20 years, but I finally went to a dermatologist, got a biopsy, and now I find out I've got mycosis fungoides. In that situation, after doing a thorough head-to-toe exam, um, asking them about any systemic issues or other illnesses, and then doing a thorough um, skin-draining lymph node basin exam around the head and neck, axilla and groin, if all of that is normal, the workup really can stop right there. And clinical follow-up and management of disease is the focus for the practitioner. If, however, the patient comes in and says, yeah, this all started you know, six months ago and every two weeks I'm getting another patch, that to me would suggest a much more aggressive pace. These may be patients that are not on track as the majority of patients are to remain in early stage, stage 1A disease. These are patients who may be evolving into higher stages of illness and therefore I need to do a more complete workup on those patients. Again, of course, thorough history, clinical exam, including a nodal exam. And then um, in that setting, I would get a baseline peripheral blood flow cytometry with the cutaneous T-cell lymphoma panel. Unfortunately, this is not commercially available. Um, typically, it needs to be done at a center where someone like me has worked with the pathologist to set up the flow cytometry such that it matches with the current staging system so that you can assess their blood stage. But that is you know, a baseline lab that I do um, routinely run in that scenario, coupled with TCR gene rearrangement in the blood and a CBC. And so there I've got a baseline in those patients. Um, if I do not palpate any abnormal nodes on exam, there's no role for imaging. Some, some providers will say, you know what, I get a PET CT on everybody, and they have their justification for that. But um, in large circles where we've discussed this as um, CTCL practitioners, the, the common theme is if there's no palpable adenopathy in a stage 1A patient, there's really minimal to no role for even baseline imaging, let alone um, subsequent surveillance imaging. Now, if on exam, the patient's got any degree of lymphadenopathy, that may be dermatopathic, meaning they're just reactive nodes to the inflammation in the skin. Again, we're assessing the skin draining nodal basins, or it may be that they've got a very rare picture where they have minimal skin disease, but they've got some nodal disease. And in that situation, a PET CT is optimal. Um, because the CT chest, abdomen, pelvis is going to show you that the nodes are enlarged. You know that from exam, but it does not help you differentiate a benign reactive dermatopathic node from a malignant tumor-filled node, whereas the PET CT will also give you information about how metabolically active that nodal tissue is, and that tracks with um, higher concern for malignancy. So in a patient with minimal disease on the skin, it's unlikely that you're going to find um, significant nodal changes, but if you do, PET CT is preferred over chest, abdomen, pelvis CT, um, depending on what their insurance will cover. But one thing that really is almost never indicated in the workup of a cutaneous T-cell lymphoma patient, certainly not an early stage patient, is bone marrow biopsy. Um, the, the only scenario where we would be doing bone marrow biopsy is if we've got a very sick, advanced stage patient who's maybe already been exposed to some cytotoxic chemotherapies or we're considering stem cell transplant and we need to know, you know what their overall synthetic function is in their marrow. In that situation, that would be sort of a separate heme onc concern that's treatment-based and it is not part of the basic workup. Bone marrow biopsy results are not included in the cutaneous T-cell lymphoma staging system. Therefore, it's generally not indicated. And I just wanted to add that today because unfortunately, given the rarity of this disease, oftentimes patients will see a dermatologist, they'll get a biopsy, it shows mycosis fungoides or even unfortunately question of mycosis fungoides. And then that dermatologist sends them to a hemonc or a medonc specialist in the community who then applies the systemic lymphoma workup algorithm to those patients, um, subjecting them to nuclear medicine studies, bone marrow biopsies, et cetera, that truly are not indicated for those patients. So I think it's really important to A, counsel patients who do not fulfill criteria for MF that they may have a benign dysregulation of their cutaneous T cells that 
is unlikely to evolve into anything else, but that requires long-term monitoring to ensure that it is not trending toward mycosis fungoides. And then secondarily, to counsel mycosis fungoides patients that they do not necessarily require a full court press systemic lymphoma workup, and that really is reserved for patients who have a large tumor burden on their skin and or the rare patient who may have limited skin disease but has obvious nodal disease on exam. So I hope that this has been helpful, and thank you again for the opportunity to participate in this great program.